Stephen Covey's first habit of highly successful people is to be proactive rather than reactive. So, of course, the first thing I did was ask myself, I'm a teacher. What can I teach? But even before I decided what I was going to teach, I looked around at different approaches that schools are using today. And I came to the conclusion that so often a program that we are using, referred to as behaviorism, is not the most effective way to get people to want to put forth effort and want to learn and behave responsibly. Specifically, you are all familiar with Pavlov's dog. Are you familiar with his cat? You see, Pavlov did not use a cat. Ivan Pavlov knew that dogs will do almost anything that you want them to do. And so he established what we refer to as classical conditioning. As you can see on the cartoon, there's a bell that rings, and then the food drops down, and the dog will salivate. Now, after a while, he could just ring the bell, and the dog salivated. This is referred to as classical conditioning. And then a fellow by the name of John Watson came along and decided that if you want people to do something, you want to reinforce it. And one of his followers was a fellow by the name of B.F. Skinner, a psychologist from Harvard University, who worked on rodents and pigeons and extrapolated that if it works on these, it must work with people also. And so the educational establishment for years has decided to use some form of behaviorism. Now, if you are using what today we would call positive behavioral interventions and support, I'll show you how you can still do that and use discipline without stress at the same time. But I think it's very important for you to understand the theory behind behaviorism. And that is, you want people to do what you want them to do, so you reinforce it. Now, by way of a tangent for a moment, when this thing was first introduced, I said there's something fundamentally wrong with it. And the reason is, if you allow a young person to behave inappropriately, irresponsibly, and if you don't do anything about it, then basically you're reinforcing that inappropriate behavior. At any rate, so along came Skinner, and we now have this thing called behaviorism whereby a kid does something that you want him to do and you reward him after the fact to reinforce the behavior that you want. Now, Tom Sawyer was a better psychologist than B.F. Skinner. Let me explain and show you why and how. You may recall a story where Tom Sawyer, on a Saturday morning, had to whitewash Aunt Polly's fence. And along comes Ben on the way to the swimming pool. And Ben says to Tom, Oh, Tom, what a shame you've got to work on Saturday. And Tom said, Ben, you don't understand. Work is something you're obliged to do. Besides, I don't think there's more than a hundred, maybe one in hundred, maybe one in two hundred people who could whitewash Aunt Polly's fence the way she wants it. She's not too particular about the fence on the back, but the fence in the front, she's very, very particular. I don't think too many people could do it. Ben says, can I try? Ben says, I don't know, Ben. Come on, Tom. Tom says, what do you have? I got a frog. So Ben gives Tom the frog. Now, the same thing occurs for the next half hour. As uh, Ben and Tom are whitewashing the fence, a half hour later, Tom has collected all these things from the other guys going to the pool, and Tom is sitting under a tree, eating an apple, conning all of his goodies. Now, how does Skinner explain this? He can't. Behaviorism is based solely on the idea of external motivation. And this is the reason why neuroscientists do not use behaviorism for working with people. People are very independent. 
as cats are, which is the reason why, going back to Ivan Pavlov, he didn't use a cat. 